So this is my lecture on field work, field work and data collection, and it's very weird to be talking to you like this. I already went through this section of the material. Um, we talked about this in lecture last Monday, um, and I just wanted to remind you what I said, but the slides are here. Really, I'm asking you a bunch of questions to have you think about what you would be doing if you are uh, starting a project. Um, and this is obviously only about the GPS part of that project or the mobile GIS part of that project. Uh, so we went through all of this and I did talk about your, my goals for your project um, where I want you to uh, be able to state what level of accuracy you used, what exactly were you doing. And then we're talking about data collection and I asked you all these questions. Um, we talked about what would make a, a field project better. Uh, there are a million things to be concerned about when you're doing field work, particularly, for example, uh, how far away the field work is, whether or not you can get there twice. Um, and we, I gave you examples of that from my own experiences. Um, so we were here. Where do data sets come from? Either you collect them yourself, that means it's a primary source, or you use them as a secondary source. And we're most used to using secondary sources. Um, and so generally speaking, they weren't collected for any particular purpose, or they were collected for a particular purpose, but it wasn't necessarily your purpose. You get them as is, and then you get to clean up, and you get to sort out, and you get to pull the data that you need. Um, sources are, for example, statistical abstracts, the census, administrative records and documents, um, could be anything from the National Map Series, for example. Um, you might be getting things in a digital format, which is great, haha, but you might get things in a um, non-digital format, right? So you might get analog and then you have to scan and then you have to fit it and all that good stuff. So which is better in terms of primary and secondary, right? Not, not which is better in, in amongst all the various types of secondary source. How do you decide whether you need to go out and get the data yourself, right? How do you decide whether you need to go do your own field work? Um, and obviously in this class, we're about the primary source. We're about you going to collect. Are you gonna collect every instance or are you gonna collect a sample? It depends on the purpose. So the cemetery mapping that I've been doing, we needed every single instance. Um, if you're collecting a sample, then it's different. So what's the purpose? What's the um, point? So I want to talk about sampling and spatial sampling and to kind of have you think through what those things mean. Um, depends on what you're trying to sample. Where is it? What kind of outcome is required? What kinds of statistics? What kinds of analyses? This determines the answers to the next set of questions which are about how you'll do your sampling. How will you make sure that the sample represents the entire population? How will the samples be chosen or identified or accessed? Um, these aren't necessarily people. We think of people, but they're not, they might be trees. Uh, they might be blades of grass, right? They could be anything. How many do you need? We talked about how the N of 30 is sort of golden for statistics. Um, but if you've got a higher number than 30, then that's often better. Once you get to the place that you're going to sample, what are you going to measure? Does time matter? Um, when are you going to measure it? So this is a list of things that you're going to kind of work through. And it's this fairly long list. So we're going to start with defining the population. So what, what does it mean to have a population? A population of people in a city, a population of trees in a forest, a population of forests in a state, or forests in a nation, right? Um, you are used to thinking probably about census data, and so you you know that there are certain different geographic units. Um, your end goal here is to think through the fact that you want to get the entire population, um, and so that's that's what your sample is getting to. Then you define the sampling frame meaning the different elements of the population that you're going to collect. So not a physical frame, of course, but you might set out the boundaries of your sample. You might say, okay, I'm going to collect the trees in this forest. I know that the trees in the upland are different from the trees down in the valley, 
or the trees in the meadow are different from the trees in the wetland. Um, and so then you're thinking through what exactly is your sampling frame supposed to be. Um, if it's um, not trees but houses, are the houses different in the historic area from in this older subdivision, from in this newer subdivision, that type of thing. So that's your sampling frame. Then you specify the sampling unit, right? So what are you going to measure, right? So again, we could think about census zip codes or tracts or um, county size areas. Uh, but but maybe you should be thinking about buildings and streets, right? If you're thinking about houses. Um, if it's trees, is your sampling unit a transect, a line? Um, if it's uh, blades of grass or smaller plants, very often people will make a frame, literally a PVC uh, square that they'll kind of get to a point and throw over their shoulder. Um, you might identify uh, a grid. You might put a, a layered grid onto your map and then you'd identify each grid square as your sampling unit. And you wouldn't necessarily sample every single grid square, but you'd sample a certain number of them, right? So, so what is your sampling unit? Next, the sampling method. What method will you use? And we're going to go through a whole bunch of different kinds of methods. Um, so not necessarily uh, single methods, but different types of methods from which then you could choose. Um, then you want to think about the size of your sample, how many units or observations, right? So how many points or how many rectangles, if that's what you're collecting, or how many transects? Um, how many individual houses do you need to observe to get a good idea of, of whatever it is? Um, you don't want it too small. You don't want it too large, right? Too small means that you cannot do statistics on it. Uh, or you're not adequately representing the population. Too large means it's too time consuming. It's expensive. Um, it's not going to be um, the right thing because there's too many in there. You'd probably a better sample with too many, but um, it's probably a better representation, I should say. Um, but you don't need it. That, that before I go on, let's go back to that one. Um, you know that um, for census, only every 10 years do we collect everybody, and it's a short form. But in between, different communities are sampled, right? And so that sample, the community sample, is designed to be extrapolated over the whole nation, right? So it's that kind of thing. We're, we're collecting a smaller number and extrapolating instead of collecting everybody. Um, so the third dot down here, specify the sampling plan and method. Um, so you're going to write up a method. You're going to decide what you're going to do. You might modify it, but you really want to have decided. You really want to know, yep, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to get to. Um, so you're going to decide all of those things, and then you're going to start actually doing your sample. I'm going to stop there and come back to this so that I'll have two shorter speaks rather than one longer one.